In There Was a Child Went Forth, Whitman explores the theme of a person becoming the sum of his experiences and observations. He reinforces this theme by repeatedly using the same or similar imagery throughout the poem. This repetition of images or ideas throughout a work of literature is known as a motif. His poem is beautiful in part because of the rich imagery. His images give structure to the poem. Let's look at the lines at the beginning of the poem, in which the child is observing the plants and animals. He begins with things that would be noticed by a young child. The early lilacs became a part of this child, and grass, and white and red morning glories, and white and red clover, and the song of the Phoebe bird, and the third month lambs, and the sow's pink faint litter, and the mare's foal, and the cow's calf. In 39 lines of poetry, there are some 50 images. Most, but not all, are visual images. Whitman also appeals to our other senses. For instance, he writes of the song of the Phoebe bird and the noisy brood of the barnyard. He also invokes smells, writing of his mother's clean cap and gown, a wholesome odor falling off her person and clothes as she walks by, and ending with the fragrance of the salt marsh and the shore mud. Although these images sometimes flow in a stream of consciousness way, they are carefully constructed to give a sense of the passage of time. At first, the objects are those observed by a young child, the flowers and baby animals. The sixth stanza describes the influences of other people on the child. And the old drunkard staggering from the outhouse of the tavern, whence he has lately risen. And the schoolmistress that passed on her way to the school. And the friendly boys that passed. And the quarrelsome boys. And the tidy and fresh-cheeked girls and the barefoot Negro boy and girl, and all the changes of city and country wherever he went. Note the contrasts in these stanzas. The old drunkard staggering home contrasts with the schoolmistress on her way to the school, the friendly boys with the quarrelsome boys, the tidy and fresh-cheeked girls with the barefoot Negro boy and girl. The contrast in these stanzas suggests that people, good and bad, have an influence on us. The next two stanzas focus on the influence of parents, with the mother's influence and the father's influence standing in sharp contrast. The mother at home, quietly placing the dishes on the supper table, the mother with mild words, clean her cap and gown, a wholesome odor falling off her person and clothes as she walks by. The father, strong, self-sufficient, manly, mean, angered, unjust. The blow, the quick word, the tight bargain, the crafty lure. The family usages, the language company, the furniture, the yearning and swelling of the heart. As the poem progresses, we see the boy leaving the farm and heading out into the world, ending at the horizon's edge. The horizon's edge, the flying sea crow, the fragrance of salt marsh and shore mud, these became part of that child who went forth every day and who now goes and will always go forth every day.